Hello, welcome to my tech farm. It looks like I have a filament dryer week because uh, we have uh, four units in this short period. This is Sanlo S4 filler dryer and this box is sent to me by the Sanlo in exchange for the review. It is a big one, it is able to dry four spools at once. The maximum temperature is 70 degrees Celsius. It has PTC heater with a heating power of 330 watts, which is almost seven times bigger compared to the S2. It has humidity control, which is uh, very useful for the storing of the filament. LCD screen with touch buttons. And it has three fans compared to the S2, which has one fan. Well, actually, I have S2, but it doesn't have a fan. Maybe it is added later. Please write me down in the comment section. If you have S2, does it have a fan or not? And anyway, I hope these three fans are not too loud. Very shortly, why do you need a filament dryer? Well, filaments will absorb moisture from the air and this may have negative effect to the print quality. Some filaments are more sensitive to this, PTG, TPU, especially in nylon, but even with the PLA or ABS, you can improve the print quality if you use the filament dryer. Let's see what's in the box. This is the content of the package. We have the main unit, power cable, user manual, two longer Teflon tubes, one meter long and a measure inner diameter is uh, three millimeters. And then we have this bag with some shorter Teflon tubes, uh, silicone plug to close the holes and some buckle springs to lock the position. On the back side we have the power plug and the switch. On the front side we have the display and I will check this later. For each spool we have two exits of the filament. One is to the side, let's say you are using this with N3, and the one to the top, let's say it goes to the K1 or Bamboo Lab or similar printers. And actually this is very nice progress because uh, the exit is tangential. A few years ago very often case was that we have only one exit for the filament and it was placed in the center of the spool resulting big bending of the filament and big friction. I don't understand, I never tried this before the mass production, especially with some carbon fiber nylon for example, this friction is so big that I'm not even using this one anymore. Let's take a look what is inside. There are two fans, I can see they operate on 12 volts DC power. Ah, we have a dedicated space for the silica gel, but they could include some. I'm not sure, maybe we have some kind of sensors here, and I can see these openings, this is for the air circulation. Nice rollers. Hmm, rotate smoothly. There are no holes for the moisture to get out, but maybe we can leave this hose opened. But I also see some micro gap here and there is no ceiling line, so I think there is a space for the moisture to exit. Now, small disadvantage, if it doesn't have the ceiling line, it doesn't seal completely, you cannot really use it for the storing of the filament, or actually you can, but you need to power it on and it will consume more energy because it always needs to do some heating and air circulating. This is two meter long power cable. Let's give it the power and check the screen. It turns on in standby position. Hmm, really nice and bright screen. Here we can see the current temperature, the relative humidity. This is the set temperature and this is the preset value for the PLA. And here we have the countdown time. You can even change these values if you want to. Polyamide, this is nylon, and for it we have the set temperature of 70 degrees Celsius, which is required here. And we can change the time. It changed by one hour. Now it's time to measure something, and I will repeat my regular sponge test, um, where I'm adding two milliliters of water to the sponge, and then I will place it inside, and I will measure the weight after half hours of drying, and after one hour. Not completely comparable with the drying of the filament, because we have here a little bit more water, but this is some kind of test which I can repeat with other filament dryers, and we have a comparison of the results. Now this area is too big for the heating. I will add two spools on one side, but on the other side it will be only a sponge. 
During the sponge test I will insert two filaments on one side and I have to be careful for which filaments because I want to do the experiment on near 70 degrees Celsius and who knows maybe the temperature of the hot air is even be above this. So I will not insert PLA filament and for example on this bamboo spool we have the warning that uh, it cannot be used only up to 70 degrees Celsius. So I will insert this one which can be used on 90 degrees Celsius. And on the other side I will insert this nylon by Polymaker. The carbon spools don't really have the limitation but the glue it can be used up to 100 degrees Celsius. I will insert the cables through this side hole so I can easily open this during the measuring. <laughs> Only two wires can fit through this hole so I split them and then I will connect them on the other side. This is DHT22 humidity and temperature sensor and well this will be its position, I don't really have the option. The data will be collected by Arduino Uno and my computer but also I can see the current temperature and relative humidity on this display. Weight of the empty sponge 0 0.677 grams. Two point six seven six set to seventy degrees Celsius. After 9 minutes, according to their sensor, the temperature inside is 69 degrees Celsius and 70% relative humidity. According to my sensors, 64 degrees Celsius and 80% relative humidity, but of course the sensors are on different locations. The noise from exactly half meter distance. Little bit more than 45 decibels and this is the second loudest filament dryer I tested so far. Okay, I understand that this is bigger and has a three fans, but I'm still waiting for the filament dryer, which will be quiet. Soon it will be a half hour measuring. According to their sensor, the temperature stabilized on 70 degrees Celsius and 12% relative humidity. According to my sensor, uh, between 66 and 67 degrees Celsius and 40% relative humidity. It's time for the measuring. Wow. 0 0.676 <laughs> This is completely dry But let's place it back I'm not sure if you can see it the sensor is completely next to the wall because the virus bended because of the heat inside Maybe that's why it is measuring a little bit less than 70 degrees Celsius, but between 66 and 67 close enough Soon it will be one hour measuring and no changes in temperatures, approximately 70 degrees Celsius inside and 12% relative humidity, according to my sensor approximately 66 degrees Celsius and 12% relative humidity. <laughs> 0 0.635, much lighter compared to the start weight, probably it had some moisture before the drying. Absolutely dried. I will close it and uh, I will collect the data 10 more minutes just to record some cooling. I'm recording the cooling, I quickly want to take out one spool to see the difference in temperatures with this thermal camera. Even for the touch I can feel the difference between two sides. The difference is not too big but it is noticeable, so this is warmer compared to this side. The warmer side and colder side. Approximately 10 degrees Celsius is the difference. I can stop collecting the data and now I can analyze the results. And now let's analyze the numbers in function of time. This is a temperature line. The maximum was 67 degrees Celsius. And here it was open for 30 minute measuring, but I was quite fast. I cannot see any bigger changes here. And here it was uh, open and turned off for one hour measuring. I can see some microwaves here, it turns on of the heater, but there are no big peaks, so this is fine. And this is the relative humidity line, and here we can see some drop when I open it. I let some moisture out, but it was almost completely dry, so there are no big changes here. And here it was turned off. 
and this is the result of the sponge test for the first time after half hours it was completely dry and here I even got some uh, bigger values than 100% because uh, there was some moisture in the sponge before the testing. And now some conclusions for the end. This is really a good filament dryer and it is able to dry four spools at once. Not much space for the improvement but let's see them. One of them already mentioned the noise. It's a little bit louder for my taste. At least it is not so high frequency noise, but a little bit deeper. But even then it would be better if it could be a little bit quieter. Adding a ceiling line, in that case we could use it as a dry box without powering it. And the third one, and it is not easy to add to this one, but in future maybe for S5, it would be great to have the possibility to rotate the spool during the drying. During the printing it is rotating because of the printer, but uh, during the drying, I know 10-12 hours, it would have much equal drying and heat if it rotates. Well, this was my experience with Sunlu S4 filament dryer. If you have some other experience, then write me down in the comment section a few lines. And uh, soon I already mentioned that we are doing some experiment uh, on our university, that if the 70 degrees Celsius is enough for drying the nylon and how long we have to dry it, and uh, probably in a few weeks it will be finished, it will be published in some scientific article, but there will be some summary on my channel too. Until that, thank you for watching and happy drying and printing.